Hi everybody, Ziv Simon here. I'm the creator of Surgical Master, the surgical training for dentists. Welcome to this video. And in this one, I'm going to talk to you about the connective tissue graft and discuss the different steps of the procedure so you too can help your patients and perform this procedure in your practice. The idea behind this video uh, came from a friend of mine who is an oral surgeon from Wisconsin, Dr. Guy Jensen. We met in Chicago last year in the American Academy of Oral Maxillofacial Surgery Convention where I gave a hands-on course. He couldn't get in. Uh, it was sold out. So I'm sorry, Guy, but I made this video for you. Uh, make up for Chicago. Hopefully you can uh, get in into the next course and uh, I'll make sure I'll save you a spot. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. So the connective tissue graft, or in short CT, is not a new procedure. Uh, we're actually now celebrating 30 years uh, since it was first published on by Langer and Langer, where they described the procedure to treat gingival recession with a connective tissue graft harvested from the patient's palate, uh, which is sub-epithelial, under the epithelium, and they showed the basic technique. So I wanted to go over the different steps of this procedure. Uh, so this will be a baseline for you when we talk about more sophisticated and complicated techniques because it is important to understand how it works so you can be prepared to do more complex procedures and manage soft tissues around teeth and implants and be all in all a good surgeon. So the CT graft has three main steps. The first step is the preparation of the recipient site, the site of the recession, that includes mechanical and chemical preparation, creating a split thickness flap, and mobilizing it coronally. So eventually when you suture, you'll have the least tension possible and allow you for great healing. Step number two is harvesting the CT graft from the palate. And step number three is suturing the graft onto the recipient site and covering it with the flap with a tension-free closure. So these are the three steps of the CT graft. So before you get started and perform this procedure and <laughs> jump right to it, what I always recommend is assess the recession, assess the etiology for the recession, explain this to the patient, and make sure that whatever is causing it is under control because the last thing you'd like to, to do is perform a successful procedure and it's going to fail because you didn't address the underlying cause. The other thing I'd like you to do is go over the criteria for a successful grafting procedure and try to predict success. I created a video some time ago that talks about how to predict success with grafting and it'll be really good for you to review it. So starting with step number one, which is preparation of the recipient site, the site with recession, I recommend you do mechanical preparation, meaning using some scaling and root planing. I also use chemical preparation. And in some instances, if there is a very large root convexity, we can even flatten the roots uh, carefully. And we talk about this in our training programs. In regards to flap design, there are different options that you have. They, they all have advantages and disadvantages, but basically we're looking at a type of flap design that in, includes vertical releasing incisions. It's my least favorite. There is an envelope flap, but also a tunneling approach. And again, they all have their own indications, advantages, disadvantages, and also different levels of complexity. Now, in theory, the flap design should be in split thickness, but in, in reality, it's not always the case, especially for the tunneling approach. But what we're trying to achieve by reflecting a flap and mobilizing it is the ability to coronally reposition it and cover the connective tissue graft and with the least tension possible. I call it tension free, but there's always some tension, whether it's initial because of the tissue elasticity or later on as inflammation and swelling occurs, that creates tension as well. So do your best to release the flap as much as possible. Now, a lot of the doctors that I work with are having trouble with a split thickness flap because they're concerned with perforation, which is a valid concern if you're not careful, 
But here's your first tip. Don't split the flap starting from the free gingival margin. Start as a full thickness flap for about two or three millimeters and only then start the splitting process. You'll save yourself a lot of headaches and heartaches and it'll make the procedure easier for you. So in this case, a split thickness flap. And as you progress in an apical direction, you will notice that you gain flexibility and that comes mostly from the mucosal part of the gingiva. And you are able to now mobilize the flap in a coronal direction and cover the recession. Step number two is harvesting a connective tissue graft. And the ideal site is the palatal aspect of the premolars and the molar. That's where the connective tissue layer is at its thickest. And it's also safe. It's at a safe distance from the greater palatine bundle. And I'm going to show you the one incision technique. And actually, the one incision technique is made out of six incisions but we call it the one incision technique because on the surface it looks like one incision and that's the recommended harvest technique that I teach. Guy, this is for you. You asked me about how I harvest a connective tissue graft from the palate. So incision number one is a full thickness incision about two to three millimeters from the free gingival margin all the way to bone and the mesiodistal extent uh, depends on the size of the graft that you need but safely you can extend it from the distal aspect of the molar, the first molar, to the mesial aspect of the first premolar. Incision number two is a superficial incision right underneath the epithelium, same extent mesiodistally and usually submerging the full length of the number 15 blade. Incision number three is parallel to number two but this time it's a profound incision, it's closer to bone and the entry point is always through incision number one. Okay, so keep in mind that all these incisions are made through the initial incision, incision number one. So I covered three incisions so far. We have our graft separated superficially and also closer to bone. And where is it held up right now? It's held up mesiodistally and apically, and these are the remaining three incisions. So again, through incision number one, you will make a mesial, a distal, and apical incision, and following that, you'll be able to pull out your connective tissue graft with cotton pliers and transfer it to the recipient site. So I just described six inc incisions, but we call it the one incision technique because if you follow these guidelines, you'll be able to harvest a connective tissue graft and end up with a donor site that looks like one incision. And obviously, you'll be able to suture it in uh, primary intention closure. So that's the advantage of this technique. And I know that you'll be very successful with it. Step number three, which is the last step, involves suturing the graft that you just harvested onto the recipient site. We suture it to the papilla and ideally you should de-epithelialize the tissue you're suturing to and also suture your flap that was in split thickness and already released to cover the graft as much as possible and the ideal suturing technique is with sling sutures that use the teeth as anchors and once this is completed the flap will move in a coronal direction to cover the, the graft and that's exactly what you want. So make sure that your graft is immobilized, that it is stable and also your flap that there's no mobility and if you tug on the lip or the cheek that the tissue does not move because the best healing is under stable conditions when the tissues are immobilized and that's how you'll be successful with connective tissue grafting. So I went over the three main steps of connective tissue grafting for root coverage, starting with the recipient site preparation, harvesting the connective tissue graft from the palate, and I described the one incision technique that is actually six incisions, 
And last but not least is suturing of the graft and flap and immobilizing this complex to have success with grafting. So I hope this presentation was helpful and valuable to you. Guy, thank you for inspiring me to make this video. I really appreciate our friendship and we now have many, many oral surgeons all over the world joining our community. So if you found this video valuable and useful, feel free to share it with other dentists. And if you're interested in more videos, visit me on surgicalmaster.com, sign up for my weekly videos and blogs. We're now rolling out the audio program on crown lengthening. There's an ebook coming out and suture training and a lot of cool things. So I look forward to sharing all of this with you.